So, we wrote down n equations and the moment we have n equations, we think that uh, we can solve all those equations and uh, get n estimates of the parameters. But I told you that even though we perform n experiments, the number of uh, uh, regression parameters or regression coefficients we estimate is smaller than n. Essentially that means we are not solving those n equations in n unknowns, right. It makes no sense also to have a huge number of parameters in our regression model. We are having such a large number that they equal to the number of uh, experimental observations. We need only a small set of parameters. So, we do not solve those equations simultaneously. We adopt some other method. You can solve n equations in un, uh, n unknowns using the matrix method. But we are going to use another method also involving matrices to get good estimates of the parameters uh, beta hat, beta naught, beta 1 hat, beta 2 hat, so on to beta k hat. So, we have totally p parameters to estimate, p is equal to k plus 1. The k rep, uh, regression coefficients associated with the k uh, regressor variables plus the uh, intercept beta naught hat which makes it k plus 1 we call p is equal to k plus 1. All these things are very clear. The method we are going to adopt is the least squares uh, estimation technique for the parameter set given by the beta column vector. So, what we do is we define a function uh, L which is defined as sigma i is equal to 1 to n epsilon i squared. In matrix notation epsilon i squared may be written as epsilon prime epsilon. This is very simple, I will explain this. epsilon was given by epsilon 1, epsilon 2, so on to epsilon n. When you take transpose, that is what is given by epsilon prime, you get epsilon 1, epsilon 2, so on to epsilon n. So, this is n rows, 1 column, this is 1 row, n column. You cannot do epsilon, epsilon prime because then you will get n by 1 into uh, 1 by n, n rows 1 column, 1 row n column, okay. And uh, when you do that, you will uh, get n by n. How is that possible? okay epsilon 1 squared and then you will get epsilon 1 2. So, this is not what we want. We want epsilon epsilon which is 1 by n into n by 1 then these two will get cancelled out and then you get 1 by 1. What is epsilon prime epsilon? You have epsilon 1, epsilon 2, so on to epsilon n and then you have epsilon 1, epsilon 2, so on to epsilon n and uh, here you get epsilon 1 squared plus epsilon 2 squared plus so on to plus epsilon n squared. So, what is happening is epsilon 1 is multiplied with epsilon 1 here plus epsilon 2 is multiplied with epsilon 2 here. So, on to epsilon n is multiplied with epsilon n here. So, that we get sigma epsilon i squared. 
i running from 1 to m. So, what we want to do is we want to identify the parameters beta such that dou L by dou beta is equal to 0. We want to minimize L. What is L? L is the sum of the square of the errors and what is error? That is very simple. What is error? This is very important. Error is y minus beta x. We wrote the model y is equal to beta x plus epsilon. So, the error term is equal to y minus beta x. Sometimes you may have positive errors, sometimes you may have negative errors and uh, to account for the error in an impartial manner, we do not want to add the positive errors and the negative error and then show us net small error or zero error. We square the errors, so that irrespective of whether the error is positive or negative, you are squaring all the errors, so that all of them become positive and we get a complete total error. So, we have sigma epsilon i squared and that may be written in matrix notation as epsilon prime epsilon. Now, we have the sum of the square of the deviations and we want to minimize that. This is the good old least squares principle. You might have done that in uh, maybe uh, higher secondary or uh, in the second year of your uh, engineering program, but the main idea is uh, the same. In matrix notation, we have dou L by dou beta is equal to 0, epsilon prime epsilon is also a scalar. And uh, so, you have after the uh, dust has settled down, x prime x beta hat is equal to x prime y or beta hat is equal to x prime x inverse x prime y. This is a very famous equation. You can uh, predict the uh, parameters for your regression model by multiplying x prime y matrix with x prime x inverse. To find beta hat, we pre multiply x prime y with x prime x inverse. So, this is going to directly give us the set of parameters. I am not giving you the uh, proof and this follows from this relation. So, to find the beta hat, we pre multiply x prime y with the inverse of x prime x inverse. So, if I put uh, x prime x inverse on both sides, x prime x inverse into x prime x will become the identity matrix and then you have this matrix inverse multiplying uh, with the x prime y that will give you directly beta hat. You do not have to do these calculations by hand, sometimes uh, for large matrices uh, finding the uh, inverses may become cumbersome and error prone. Uh, you can use uh, the aid of mathematical software like MATLAB for instance to do the uh, matrix manipulations. So, let us look at the dimensions of these uh, matrices. We are having uh, x prime x beta hat is equal to x prime y, beta hat is equal to x prime x inverse into x prime y. So, are the uh, dimensions consistent? It is a good uh, time to summarize the dimensions of the different matrices uh, involved x matrix is having uh, n rows and uh, p columns, n experimental observations and uh, p regression uh, coefficients or uh, the parameters beta naught so on to beta k, which would be k plus 1 parameters. x prime x 
transpose of x uh, multiplying with x. So, if x is n by p, transpose of x would be p by n. When I am saying transpose, I am interchanging the rows and columns. So, suppose I have a matrix uh, with a certain number of rows and certain number of columns. When I take the transpose of that matrix, I am converting uh, rows into columns and columns into rows. So, if I am having n by p for x matrix, the transpose of the x matrix would have dimensions of p by n. You had n rows and p columns originally in the x matrix. In the x prime matrix, you have p rows and n columns because the rows and columns have interchanged. So, when I multiply these two, the n by n will cancel out and then we have p cross p. x prime y would be uh, p cross n as we saw here and y is a column vector of n observations. So, it will be n by 1. So, x prime y would be p cross 1 and uh, beta hat would be p cross 1. It is a column vector comprising of p parameters and one uh, column. The p parameters are arranged row wise and uh, this should be capital Y which is the uh, vector of responses n rows and one column. I will just make it as capital Y. So, the fitted regression model is given by Y predicted is equal to x beta hat the difference between the actual ith observation and the predicted value given above is called as a residual and may be expressed in matrix notation as E is equal to y minus y hat. So, we have been using epsilon and now I am using E. There is a reason for this uh, change. Epsilon represents the true error, the random component of the experiments reflected in the form of epsilon, the random experimental error, but I am using E. I am saying that E is a residual and that residual may be only due to the uh, random error or it may also be including the uh, unexplained effects in the experiment because of inadequate modeling. Okay. If my model is not fully able to explain the variations in the experimental response, then that discrepancy cannot be dismissed as random error. So, my residual contains possibly unexplained variability and also the experimental error. So, I am using E here. If all the possible variability has been accounted for in the model, then the residuals would be a true uh, reflection on the random error component. So, first we will calculate the error sum of squares. The moment we see the term sum of squares, we can guess that some analysis of variance is involved. So, you have y minus y hat is equal to E, which is the residual. E prime will become uh, y prime minus y hat prime and then we have y prime x beta hat is equal to beta prime x prime y, but both are the same. Both are the same because both of them are scalars. It can be easily shown that y prime x beta hat is a scalar. It has dimensions of 1 by 1. That calculation is shown here. And then you also have beta prime x prime y, which is again a scalar and that dimensions are also shown in this calculation. The n's will cancel out nicely leaving 1 by 1. Right. Now, we can show elegantly that the sum of squares of the error is given by y prime y minus beta hat prime x prime y. This is very uh, interesting. Let us see the proof. On board and then uh, do the derivation directly so that uh, uh, people who are not familiar with these uh, can follow the steps. So we have y minus x beta hat prime into y minus x beta hat. So I take the prime inside and uh, 
we know that uh, when you take A of B prime, this becomes B prime A prime. So, using that there is no problem with Y, it becomes Y prime X beta hat whole prime becomes beta hat prime into X prime into Y minus X beta prime. So, this becomes Y prime Y minus Y prime X beta hat minus uh, beta prime X prime Y plus beta prime X prime X beta prime uh, beta hat ok. So, I am just multiplying the last two terms here. So, this will be a beta hat prime X prime X beta hat. So, we uh, saw that from the uh, previous slide that uh, y prime x beta hat is equal to beta prime x prime y. So, you also have minus beta prime x prime y plus you have this term. So, these two can be written as y prime uh, minus 2 beta hat prime x prime y. So, we get y prime y minus 2 beta hat prime x prime y plus beta hat prime x prime x beta hat. And uh, we also know by definition that uh, x prime x beta hat is equal to x prime y. You may recollect that we found uh, the parameters beta hat by taking x prime x inverse x prime y. So, this is the uh, equation which I can use here. And uh, that becomes uh, beta hat x prime y. You have minus 2 beta hat x prime y. So, you get y prime y minus beta hat x prime y. So, this completes the derivation. It is always good to go to the board and uh, do the derivations. Powerpoints also have their own charm and uh, make teaching more convenient. On the other hand, uh, writing on the board you make mistakes, you correct the mistakes and uh, learn in the process. I hope uh, that you would also feel uh, interested to do the derivations independently uh, on a paper and see whether uh, your results are matching with the final expected results. So, now we are going to talk about a very important uh, uh, property of linear regression uh, analysis. Uh, it is the variance covariance matrix. So, obviously, we are going to talk about a matrix and uh, we have found the parameters beta naught, beta 1, so on to beta k. We want to know how precise these parameter estimates are. So, to have an idea about that, we can use the variance covariance matrix. So, let me just introduce the matrix to you and then we will talk about how to apply it in real uh, regression problems. So, the variance of the least square estimators are the elements of x prime x inverse matrix multiplied by the error variance sigma squared. Where did we see sigma squared previously? I showed a figure where we had the uh, true relationship line and we showed the experimental data scattered around this line. We said that uh, the scatter was described by a probability distribution uh, which was a normal distribution. The mean of that distribution was given by the equation, but the data was not exactly aligning with that uh, value given by the equation or the data was not present exactly at the mean value, but it was 
present somewhere else because of random effect. This probability distribution was having a variance sigma squared. All the data points which were scattered around the true line had the same uh, variance sigma squared. Let me go to that figure again. So, here we have this particular uh, figure, you have the true line and then you have the data scattered around this line and uh, the scatter is because of experimental error. The uh, scatter is described in terms of probability distributions and these are normal distributions most conveniently and uh, the mean of these distributions are given by the uh, equation. This mean would be different from this mean because this x value is different from this x value. Here you have one x value, here you have another x value. Then you have the data points which are scattered around this and the probability distribution is uh, having a mean given by beta naught plus beta 1 x and changes with x, but it has a constant variance sigma squared. This is the sigma squared we are going to use in the variance covariance matrix. So, now coming back to the variance covariance matrix, we have x prime x inverse multiplied by sigma squared and that sigma squared was the constant error variance. But unfortunately, we do not know sigma squared. We need to estimate the parameters beta naught, beta 1, so on to beta k. We also need to estimate the error variance sigma squared. We are having a variance covariance matrix. That term implies that matrix contains both variances as well as covariances. Which are the variances and which are the covariances? The diagonal terms in this matrix x prime x inverse uh, sigma squared matrix represents the variances. The diagonal terms means uh, first row, first column and the second row, second column, the element corresponding to third row, third column and so on. So, if you look at the matrix, the main diagonal will comprise of the variances of the estimated parameters. The off diagonal elements of the variance covariance matrix will represent the uh, covariances between the parameters. So, just now we are introducing the variance covariance matrix. It is important and enough at this point if you understand that the variances are given by the diagonal terms and the covariances are given by the off diagonal terms. And it is also important to note that the variance covariance matrix is symmetric. What is a symmetric matrix? A symmetric matrix is one whose appearance is unchanged when you change rows into columns and columns into rows. So, you can have a symmetric matrix and uh, when you interchange the columns and rows, it appears to be just as the same. It is also important to note that the variance covariance matrix or simply called as the covariance matrix sometimes people call it as a variance matrix also. So, the covariance matrix dimensions are p cross p. Do not get confused if sometimes you see variance covariance matrix or and other times you see covariance matrix, both are the same. Finally, we have come to the form of the variance covariance matrix or simply the covariance matrix that is represented by C. It is bold, it is bold because it indicates a matrix and not a scalar. And uh, here we have uh, x prime x inverse sigma squared. Let us represent the columns of x prime x inverse as c naught naught, c naught 1, c naught 2, c 1 0, c 1 1, c 1 2, c 2 0, c 2 1, c 2 2. So, this represents the diagonal of the matrix. So, C naught naught, C 1 1 and C 2 2 are the diagonal elements of this matrix and the off diagonal elements are given by those entities which are not along the diagonal. 
So, all elements other than C naught naught, C 1 1 and C 2 2 are off diagonal elements. So, you have sigma squared outside. You may as well take sigma squared inside and multiply all these terms with sigma squared. So, this is a symmetric matrix. What is a symmetric matrix? If I change rows into columns and columns into rows, the matrix appearance is unchanged. That means, C naught 1 will be equal to C 1 0, C naught 2 will be equal to C 2 0. If C naught 1 is equal to C 1 naught, then it will appear as if there is no change. Similarly, C naught 2 will be equal to C 2 0 and uh, here also C 2 1 will be equal to C 1 2 and C 2 0 will be equal to C 0 2. So, then you have a symmetric matrix and that is what I have represented here C 1 0 is equal to C naught 1, C 2 0 is equal to C 0 2 and C 2 1 is equal to C 1 2 and this is a x prime x inverse matrix is a symmetric matrix and the variance of the estimated parameters beta hat are given by the diagonal term sigma squared c j j where j is equal to 1 or 0 or 2 and the covariance between two different parameters beta i and beta j are given by the off diagonal terms. So, there is obviously a typo here which I will correct. So, that is what you have here the covariance between two different uh, parameters beta i hat and beta j hat will be sigma squared c i j where i is not equal to j. As I said earlier, we do not know the value of sigma squared and hence we need to have an estimate for the error variance and we also have to make sure that this estimate is the true error variance and not uh, have any systematic influences. So, we want to replace sigma squared by an estimate of sigma squared, we call it as sigma hat squared. In the true regression model, we had y is equal to uh, x beta plus error. That beta is the uh, column vector of true parameters uh, describing the experimental phenomena or rather the phenomena investigated by the experiments. Since we uh, do the uh, parameter estimation based on the available experimental data, the influence of errors are also there and hence uh, our model is not accounting for the uh, random phenomena, it is only accounting for the systematic phenomena and uh, hence we are only getting estimates of beta and that is given by beta hat. Even though we would like beta hat to be as close as possible to beta, we may not be able to achieve the aim because the data is subject to experimental uncertainty, which is not included in our uh, regression model. Okay, it is accounted for separately as the error term. Similarly, when you want to uh, use sigma squared, since the true value of sigma squared is not known we need an estimate of sigma squared which we use in our calculations and we call that uh, sigma squared as sigma hat squared. How to find it out? We will see shortly and uh, then once you are able to find the sigma hat squared, the square root of the estimated variance of the jth regression coefficient is called as the estimated standard error of the least squares estimator beta hat j. Now, we do not use the term standard deviation here. We are again taking the square root of the estimated variance of the jth regression coefficient and uh, we call it as uh, estimated standard error. It is not called as standard deviation. So, the estimated standard error of the least squares estimator is given by S e, S e stands for standard error for beta hat j 
and that is given by square root of sigma hat squared c j j. So, this j here is matching with the j's given here and this is an estimated value and we are uh, using the variance covariance diagonal element multiplying it with the estimated uh, error variance and when we take the square root we get the standard error of the estimated beta hat j. How did we get the beta j hat or beta hat j? It is the least square method we adopted to find this parameter and hence it is called as the least square estimator of beta j and it is represented by beta hat j. The standard errors are a measure of the precision of the estimation for the regression coefficients. Small standard errors imply good precision. So, it is a measure of the fuzziness associated with the estimated regression coefficients. If the fuzziness is too much, then there is a big spread around the estimated beta hat. But if the spread given by the standard error is quite narrow, then we have estimated betas or the beta hats with good precision or reasonable precision. For analysis of variance purposes, the estimation of the residual error is required. In order to also get an estimate of sigma squared, we need the estimation of residual error. The residual should ideally reflect the difference due to random factors and not systematic discrepancies created by using an inadequate model. And uh, the uh, residual error uh, is also an unbiased estimator of sigma squared. So, we define the uh, error variance in the following manner. We have sigma hat squared is equal to sigma i is equal to 1 to n e i squared divided by n minus p and that is given by sum of square of the error divided by n minus p. Uh, it is the difference between the actual experimental value and uh, the predicted value. The error in a column vector form as y minus y hat experimental vector and this is the model predicted vector. Each entity we may represent it as e i, i running from 1 to n. So, it will be y i minus y hat i for the residual i or the ith residual. Sum of square of the error is actually given here itself i is equal to 1 to n y i minus y hat i whole squared uh, and that is summed to give the sum of square of the error. So, if you look at Kuttner et al 2004 uh, reference, we can define the covariance matrix or the variance covariance matrix as the expected value of beta hat minus expected value of beta hat that is multiplied by again transpose of beta hat minus expected value of beta hat. So, you have this and uh, we have to expand it and express it in matrix form. So, we have expected value of beta naught minus beta naught, beta 1 hat minus beta 1, beta 2 hat minus beta 2. So, we have that matrix multiplying with this uh, matrix comprising of only one row and three columns. So, we have transpose of this written here. Transpose I am converting uh, rows into columns. So, I am having one column here with three rows. I am converting it into a matrix with one row and three columns. So, this becomes beta naught minus beta naught hat minus beta naught and then this goes to the row element beta 1 hat minus beta 1, then it goes to the next row element beta 2 hat minus beta 2. So, this is what we have. I can first multiply this and then find the expected value as given by E. And uh, also an important thing to realize is the expected value of beta hat is that parameter beta itself. So, th this is a unbiased uh, estimator beta hat. Now, when we uh, first multiply this, it becomes a symmetric matrix 
and uh, the expected value of the diagonal terms will uh, become the variances and the off di expected value of the off diagonal terms will become the covariances. So, let us do the multiplication we can beta naught minus beta naught into beta naught hat minus beta naught that is what you have here beta naught hat minus beta naught into beta 1 hat minus beta 1 and that is what you have here. You may want to do the calculations on your own to see whether you get this particular form. So, this term here is equal to this term and this term here is equal to this particular term. So, the matrix is symmetric we can show it for other terms also what other term we can show. So, you have uh, 3 2 will be equal to 2 3 third row and second column element is this that should be equal to the second row and third column element and that is what these two are matching. So, we can conclude that the matrix presence inside the argument is uh, symmetric then we apply the expectation to all these elements in the matrix and uh, we know that the expected value of beta naught hat minus beta naught squared is nothing but the variance of uh, beta naught hat ok. So, that becomes quite straightforward and the off diagonal terms will uh, become expected value of beta naught hat minus beta naught into beta 1 hat minus beta 1 and that would uh, relate to the covariance beta naught hat and beta 1 hat. So, to find the uh, sigma hat squared we have sigma i is equal to 1 to n e i square divided by n minus p that is sum of square of error divided by n minus p. So, this is how we are finding an estimate of sigma uh, squared the error variance. And since we are finding an estimate we denote it as sigma hat squared and sigma i is equal to 1 to n e i square divided by n minus p equal sum of square of error by n minus p. So, that is accounted for and uh, then what we do is uh, we have that value sigma hat squared and then we can multiply uh, all these elements with that sigma hat squared and then we can find the different variances and covariances uh, of the parameters and their combinations. So, when I multiply this, this would become the variance of beta naught hat and this would be the variance of beta 1 hat and so on. Now, we are going to talk about uh, regression sum of squares and error sum of squares. So, what we do here is we express the deviation between an actual response and the predicted response in terms of two deviations. Deviation of actual response from mean response and uh, deviation of uh, predicted response from mean response. So, rather than putting it in the words let us see in uh, symbols. So, first we are expressing the deviation of a particular response from the average uh, value of the observations. You are conducting all the uh, n experiments and you take the average value of the response this is y i minus y bar and that may be written as y i minus y hat i plus y hat i minus y bar this will cancel out with this. So, you will be finally getting y i minus y bar or we can write this equation involving the deviation of uh, the actual experimental data point from the predicted value y hat i as y minus y bar y i minus y bar minus y i hat minus y bar. So, we are defining the uh, residual as the sum of two or as the difference of two entities deviation of the experimental observation from the mean value deviation of the predicted value from the mean value ok. This is very interesting 
instead of directly writing y i minus y hat i, you are writing it as y i minus y bar minus y i hat or y hat i minus y bar. So, you are adding and subtracting and adding y bar in this expression. So, the residual which is the discrepancy between the uh, actual experimental value and the predicted value is expressed as the difference between y i minus y bar and y i hat minus y bar. So, what is the discrepancy of y i with respect to the mean value that I will subtract with the discrepancy between the predicted value and uh, the average value y bar. So, that can be shown graphically in a nice fashion. This is the actual experimental data point and that is uh, slightly off from the prediction value. This is y i and then you have y hat i and this is the average value based on all the experimental data points. So, we want to find the deviation between these two, the residual that may be expressed as the deviation of y i with respect to y bar minus the deviation of y hat i with respect to y bar. Next we go to hypothesis testing and linear regression. So, we are going to start a new phase in the regression analysis and it is also interesting to note that whatever we studied in the first part of statistics for experimentalists are coming into play in the second part as well or in the second phase as well. So, now you will be able to appreciate uh, with your background in uh, inferential statistics on what we are going to do with linear regression. When we apply those to linear regression things will become very clear and you also will understand why we are doing these kinds of tests. So, the hypothesis test is what we are going to study in detail in the next lecture. I request you to not only brush up your uh, fundamentals in uh, linear algebra, but also look at the concepts we covered in hypothesis testing, find out what is meant by level of significance, the p value, the uh, region of acceptance, region of rejection, the uh, confidence intervals. Please uh, refresh your concepts on these topics and if and if and once you have done so, whatever we are going to discuss next will become very simple. Thank you for your attention.